Tony, there's some real money in the room. Well, you talked about you having your own personal mm -hmm. downward mm -hmm. spiral. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what, I mean, people, if you go on the internet, it, it say one thing. You know what I mean? Be all these little d different crumbs to lead you to some to some conclusion. You know what I mean? Um, and I would probably and I and I would be the contributor to that because I'd be trying to explain some shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying to explain what it what I went through and because my big thing was the testing. You know, the testing. Uh, you know, and catching STD in this business and the testing. Uh, you know, it has to be transparent. You know, you catch something, everybody's got to know it. You know, if you, you caught something, who you work with? You know, you catch gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, HIV, you know, anything. Uh, you know, that's our, that's our protocol. That's our, uh, you know, I don't know. It's supposed to be fail safe, right? It's supposed to make people feel comfortable. So for, for me, I went through this whole thing with the testing. And I got blackballed. Because I was dealing with something that I was, you know, personally, you know, I was like, people catch gonorrhea, they catch chlamydia, they catch shit, uh, and they get it treated, and life goes on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some people want to dwell on it. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I, you know, life moves forward. So, with me, it was, that was a big, I don't know. Because I don't even know if I can articulate it clearly enough. Because I feel like there's people know shit, people that were there, people that could have done things, handled things differently, never. As far as the blackballing or the testing? The or testing. The like, it was so many different things because it was political. Um, well, my, I, I kind of looked into it a little bit, and it was like some women from another country, mm -hmm. but they were stars as well. They were in the business. Mm -hmm. But I guess their testing wasn't accurate over there or they didn't require it as much as it did over here mm -hmm. so my perspective that kind of falls back on whoever was directing right because they should have oversaw you know well i i mean i think what it was two different we have two different um uh mentalities when it comes to STDs as far as overseas in Europe and here in America. Mm -hmm. You know, in Europe, they pretty much kind of will work through the testing system. Like cats work and they might be positive with something, but they still work, right? And in, in terms of what syphilis, I think what it was happening with out there was there was more of an acceptance to it. There wasn't this uh, shame factor it wasn't like it was part of the job it was like you know it wasn't an embarrassment factor uh and here it was more like you know you know it was the media picked it up in a real negative way and i think our industry american wise had also seen it in a negative way that was probably one that was our approach to it that was one thing and i think the other aspect of it was uh, you know, performer's responsibility. You know what I mean? That's how we look out for each other. If I catch something, don't work, get tested, get treated. And so that, been, that was the protocol for so long. That's our responsibility. It's not the director's responsibility. It's the performer's responsibility. And that's what I came up under, you know? And so, you know... It, the flip side is that maybe there should have been more support. There is now. Now they have all the, all the testing in place. They have doctors in place now. You weren't dealing with doctors. You were dealing with clinicians who were just taking your blood, giving you the results. There's no aftercare. There's no treatment. They may refer you just outside the industry for treatment. <laughs> you know what I mean? So a lot of those things have changed. All those protocols have changed. You know, they're better now. But... um I mean, I, I guess that's, you know, I, that's where I'm at with it. Somebody else, you ask somebody else, I would be curious to know what other people think because it was, it was like I said, it was so many different things. And what I, what I saw when I observed social media was pretty new. This was like 2011. Oh, 
You know what I mean? So there's a whole different era of social media and the way people work and spread news online. You know what I mean? Uh, so, and viral wasn't really... Facebook had just been out for a few years. MySpace just ended. Yeah, MySpace, yeah. people were transitioning away from MySpace. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. you know, it's just oh, headlines. Man, I imagine, man. man I, just, <laughs> I didn't think about it like, you know, coming from the non-internet era to where, you know what I'm saying, news, travels, news gets picked up to that's all going around is information that was like readily and accessible mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. headlines the way people worded things the yeah. way they caught your attention yeah i saw a lot of that you know what i mean and how, how'd you how, how, how were you able to battle through that well, it was a few hard days because yeah. you you know you're not used to that you used to like the love but you ain't never had that much hate <laughs> you know what i mean and so <clears throat> you you know luckily my kids my you know my wife at the time, my family at the time, was very like, you know, kind of like, they were, I don't know, well, I don't know. I had them. I had them in my mind, like, okay, well, at least I got you guys. You know what I mean? Y'all ain't turned on me. <laughs> but, but they slowly, you know, but it also revealed a lot of things. It was like, uh, you know, it was, it was crazy because my public life and my private life were like all like. Starting to intertwine. Oh, yeah. And I was kind of like, and I hadn't had that before. Yeah, you know, when I started tough. making movies, there was no internet, you know? There wasn't even DVDs. There was no way to ever have, there was no digital footprint of what you, we do now. It right. was a magazine and a VHS tape. I can only imagine, man, uh, and I, I feel for you right here, because it's like, you know, out of nowhere, you know, people who didn't even know, like, you know, family, you know, and I'm in the entertainment industry, so, when you, you know, you try to keep that as separate as possible, but it's not until some bullshit goes on right. to where it's like, man, well, hey, what are they talking about? <laughs> then they asking you, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. you know, in, in your world, it may be normal for some BS to go down, but in their world, it's so abstract. It, it's so abnormal. They're so concerned. You know what I mean? And you just like, you, it, it's like you can't explain it to them like you would a, another actor. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like a, a whole thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's right. a thing. Man, and right. yeah, man, I'm, right. I'm sorry that happened to you that way, at least by the, you know, yeah, being I, a blogger or an interviewer, you know what I'm saying? A journalist, right. man, it's like, man. Yeah. Well, you know, and what I, what I thought, the way I started, you know, because I laugh at a lot of shit and got yeah. laugh at shit. And I said, well, of course that shit would happen to me. Of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You yeah, know. I mean, you're one of the biggest niggas doing it. Man. Right. I mean, of course, you know I, of course I would have to go through that shit. Right, right. You right. know, look, you know, and it's not even me. It was just, you know, the, it was like I didn't want it to affect anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's truthfully what it was. I didn't want I didn't want these girls to be affected because of me. I didn't want these guys to be their their work. Yeah, affected. it's like you got punished for keeping it real. Right. I didn't want the industry to take it. You know, I didn't want the industry to be all fucked up. Right. It was just weird. It was just like, you know, and you have, there pe uh, you know, I'm used to people loving porn and loving sex, you know, but then you also have people like, hey, anti, all of that shit. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, can't stand it, don't love it, fuck you for doing it. So, you know what I mean? And I think, you know, you get, you get cats and that was like, they had their time, you know, they had their say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man. Um, well, I'm glad you're still here, man. And um, it, it's just amazing to me, though, even like, you know, syphilis, that they, there was the Tuskegee experiment. You heard of the Tuskegee experiment where mm -hmm. they, the, the, even after the treatment came, they didn't. Uh, they didn't. Uh, yeah. yeah, they didn't administer it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and man, is. Well, you know, and that's and that's where it became like to me. I was like, well, it's a teaching moment. Right. Right. If you go, you know, you're going to bring it up, then go get tested. You know, if you catch syphilis, you wouldn't, and, you know, and that's, and there was a news story recently by uh, USC did a study and they were saying, you know, syphilis affects minorities the most because they're like afraid to go get tested. And so, and it's, it's a disease, it's a, it's a bacteria that causes an infection that, you know, it comes, there's stages of it and you'll, you'll see signs of it and then those signs will disappear completely. And then it will still wreak havoc on your body. And so if you miss that, you know, luckily I caught it and I was right. able to like get treated, right. you know, look at me, I'm, you know, yeah, yeah, thank right. God. But there, 
It so could, on the flex it, one time. You know, <laughs> no, <okay>. <laughs> but you know, but I had to like I said, well, if I I didn't, you know, I caught something that I can get treated. Right. Okay, cool. And then it became like people were like, uh, you know, but so you have to get educated on it. You know what I mean? And I didn't know shit about it. And so you came and teaching moment. You talk to these young kids that are just starting to have sex, just starting to do, you know, whatever. You know, put a word in. You know, yeah. Well, you, you it, can get tested. You can take home testing, and you can use condoms, or you can just say no. It, it was something you said, man. Uh, not to veer off, but you no, was talking you. about like, man. At least I got my kids, and even eventually, oh right, 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 became like what? What happened there? I mean, on a personal level, it was like, you know, the family was like, didn't ask for all that shit. They right. didn't ask for the bullshit that I was bringing. You know to the to the to the family to the table right. and so uh you know i went through a divorce so i was going through a divorce at the same time prior to or no as <laughs> it was brutal it was brutal i did a lot of facebook posts you know i was in you know like I would get through the day. <laughs> it was like, I was basically like, you know, I would feel like I had to talk to somebody. I had right, to like right. tell somebody like, this is, this is heavy. Like, you know, I, you know, who, who gives, who gives a fuck? But I was like, at some point, at one point, somebody did give a fuck. Now nobody gave a fuck. So it was kind of like, you know, I internalized things, of trying to grow, trying to learn from it. But, um, uh, that's that was going on the divorce was going on and then that was going on uh and then it was like bad decisions poor decisions you know uh, um, drinking nah i mean i like to drink ain't gonna lie yeah who don't uh smoking weed a lot probably playing well, a lot of legal. playing a lot of call of duty i was all on that shit i was on that shit 24 yeah, 7. Yeah, yeah i just got the new one yeah oh you did yeah. uh modern warfare 2 huh yeah yeah, yeah. that's pretty dope yeah yeah you live about that yeah. uh but you know, a lot of just and then my dog. I would walk my dog two times a day. I'm a thinking person. I, right, right, right. I dive into books and you know, kind of veg out. But you know, I maintain a solid relationship. You know, uh, I got a spiritual one, but I, but I maintain a relationship with my, you know, the, the mother and my kids. And, yeah. You know, my daughter was actually looking at colleges at that same time that all that shit was happening. So it wasn't a, much of a distraction, but it, it was a responsibility to her right. to like just focus on that. Right. <laughs> Man, so a lot of women that I'm with, you know what I'm saying, I try to encourage them, you know, only fans, we could get some money, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, just as all some yeah, fun yeah. shit. See, bitch, you're gonna get a job, but you know what would be more fun? Only fans. <laughs> yeah, you get these twenty <laughs> subscribers and you know say that fifteen dollars a we month. Eat, you know we eat good. Yeah, yeah, we, come we, on, man. Shit. Think about the residuals. Right. But what I often hear is the man, I don't want my kids to like see me in this light. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you and other stars like deal with that? Like the idea that your kids might see you, even like now, like Kim is going through it. I mean, it's a different era of people who have put themselves out there sexually. I ain't the only one. Right. You know, you can go to Pornhub and it's amateur shit. You know, the women seem to have no problem with it. <laughs> I right. mean, so I guess, you know, if, if the, you know, it's like if they cool, we cool. You know, so, uh, I, you know, I haven't, you know, it's tough as a dude, you know, because my kids are, are, you know, you know, they've they've had they've heard people call me Mr. Marcus when we out <laughs> and about, you know, restaurants, sure. shopping, whatever. Mr. Marcus this, Mr. Marcus that. And the kids just kind of, they pay it no mind, bro. So, you know, they both college educated, they both working, they both, are, you know, career driven. You know, and their dad just happens to be, you know, it was a super freak. Hey, real tone, it's a real money in the room.